Um, no, we had a lot of good football, of course. Trend was. Um, Great fight, good game, intense, how Derby should be. And our first, or yeah, since I'm at Liverpool, the first win at Old Trafford. Good timing, I would say. We needed it, obviously. We fought hard for it, we deserved it. And so, all good. Where did it come from, do you think, that victory tonight? Oh, top goals. Um, we scored good goals, we reacted really well on their goal, we obviously was unlucky in that moment. But it was a bit like we started the game, to be honest, so the, the defending in that moment, letting Bruno from the half right side going inside, there was nobody. So he could have used his left, he used the outside of his right foot, and it was unlucky in the, in, in the, in the centre, but the defending in that moment wasn't good. So we, we had to, they overloaded the wings, obviously, and we, we, we didn't adapt well on that in the, in the first 15 minutes or so. Then we got control there, and from that moment on we could play what we wanted to play, and um, that was then absolutely OK, and second half even, even better. It was a big part of your performance tonight, Trent Alexander-Arnold's <laughs> performance. Yeah. His radar-like passing. Yeah, 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 it was good. It was good. I saw only good performances, to be honest. Come on. You saw that our two centre-halves were might made be a little bit shaking in the beginning of the game. You could see that with the passing, but in the moment when they were in the game, uh, when they forgot all everything around, they played a really good game. No, we had a lot of good football, of course. Trent was um, in, in a proper shape tonight, um, played pretty much everything. We had to dare to adapt as well in the first half. Pogba fixed him too often defensively, like when just and then um, Luke was free. Um, so we had to be more braver there. We did that, and at that moment they couldn't chip the ball to Shaw anymore, and um, they lost another another little tool. And um, that's how we step by step um, got control of the game as much as you can control them because they obviously have a lot of quality. Scored a, a really good goal. Uh, the two three yeah and then it's of course tricky yeah, but it makes then absolutely sense to score the fourth one which was really nice did you absolutely need that fourth goal do you think yeah 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 you need you need that it was a game that they, they how long was to play a minute plus extra time maybe five minutes altogether two goals um, we didn't play that bad that it looked like that so it was very intense for all of them I, I really thought um, midfield played outstandingly well but it was Super intense when, when Curtis came on, that helped a lot. When you have then the speed of Sadio, that helps, and, and all these kind of things. So we could make the, the three changes were really, were really good. And then Nico Williams, a few minutes at least, defending the wing. So it um, was good. Spells all round, apart from Sadio Mane on the final whistle, 
who didn't look too happy with you. Is there a problem there? No, there's no problem. I mean, yesterday I made a late decision in training to, to decide um, for Diogo. And uh, so the boys are used to that. They explain things usually. Uh, but there was actually no time for that. And um, that's, just, that's all. It's all fine. What does this do now, this result, in terms of your desire to get into, not your desire, it was the possibility. <laughs> it was necessary. Not, without this result, we don't have to talk too much about it. So we are still in the game, in the race. That's all what we could have done tonight. We did that and now we have um, we have a very intense period now. Eh? We play now the next three games in a week. So in three days, West Brom, which is tough, Burnley with supporters and then Crystal Palace are at home. We are obviously looking forward to for different reasons because uh, our supporters are then there as well, hopefully. And so that's it now. Very intense. We have to, to um, recover quickly and then to go again. Tonight, did we see parts of the game you back to your best I, I'm not so much interested um, because it's not it's not about that. We, we played a lot of good stuff. I, I really liked how our midfield was connected. Always when we played in the front three, really together when we were close and when we when we played wide. You, but found the centre then um, went in behind the line or together. There was a lot of good stuff. It's not to compare really. It's a different team. It's a different year, um, and I'm not too interested in it. So, uh, we played a good game and we played good enough to, to win. And we had other teams here and didn't win. So um, obviously we did some stuff right tonight. What brought about that defeat? Uh, they deserved to the win. Uh, it was we conceded goals in bad moments of the key moments of the game. You know, just before half time, just after the second half started, and of course towards the end, we didn't call it build on the momentum or break up momentum. Uh, first. 10, 15 minutes. I thought we played really well. We should have built on that momentum and maybe pushed pushed more. And um, then we give him give him three goals. Really, at least two of them we give him. And then when we score again, we we've got momentum. We have a massive double chance there. Uh, so key moments went against us. Too many individual errors as well. We were a bit sloppy in some passages, giving the ball away more than normal. Yeah, you know the. Their, their shape and their pressing. They're very aggressive, they're, they're very, very good press. And of course, we created our own, our own, own I can't even speak now, uh, our own down, uh, downfall. Because we, um, the second goal, we we probably expect uh, no foul there and just, because it's not really a foul, but the referee probably gives a foul because Bruno. Bruno is up there, and it's a it's a bad moment to concede a goal in just before half time. And as I said, the start of the second half was really really poor. Uh, that uh, third goal we gave him. Do you think missing Harry Maguire is a factor, not just in his individual position, but his presence across the team? Harry's been really important for us and really good, and he's uh, he's been absolutely top since he came to the club. So of course we're going to miss him, but. He's out, so we've got to deal with that. We've got good enough players to, uh, to be able to deal with it. We should be. So uh, now it's about regrouping, uh, start, uh, start building our, uh, our own confidence and momentum again, because we've got two games in the league and then the final. You say they were good, they pressed hard. Is an element that perhaps they wanted it more no. because they're fighting for it? You're already safe for Champions League. No, 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 no. The, the attitude was right. The, the focus was. Uh, I saw in the, in the boys this or this afternoon that we were, were ready for it. And then uh, games, as I said, key moments went against us. We we didn't really, as I said, build on the good good times. We, especially the start of the game, I thought we we should go more for it. And when we lose the ball up there, go and win it back. But sometimes we let them off the hook. Uh, we let them play out, and then they're hard to um, to defend against. As we said, your Champions League football is assured. But how quickly do you return to form? Because, of course, you have a huge final. Tuesday. We need to uh, find ourselves straight away. We've got Fulham on Tuesday, and we need to start, as I said, building that momentum and confidence, because um, two games, that's uh, it's not a lot of preparation, but we, we should go into that final uh, ready, because uh, I expect Tuesday to be a good one. Once again, this was played against the backdrop of the protests. It may well be the same again on Tuesday. Is that having an effect on you or the team? Well, of course, when 
a little bit of the preparation. Uh, it's, it's different. And the games that came here together in, in five days, three league games, of course, it disrupts it a little bit. So it's not been ideal, but we've had to deal with it. And um, we've, um, we've come through it now and uh, just hopefully the, when we can let the fans in on, on Tuesday, it'll be a good, a good atmosphere here. Let's hope so. Thanks, Oli. We've been waiting for a long, long time to let them in. So uh, it's about time we, uh, we enjoy uh, the game together. Thanks, Oli. Thank you. Cheers. Matt, can you sum up that game, that result, and what it means? Um, not really, to be honest. Um, it was a roller coaster. It was a strange game, and it took a lot from us, a lot of hard work. And you know, it was an ugly match, but we had to make it that way at the end to make sure that we got the result. And um, what it means to us, it's it's another step in the right direction. We've got another three games to go, um, but tonight was a big night for us. You started off with a horrible deflection for the first goal, then you have a penalty given and overturned. At that point, you start to think, this is just one of those nights, it's not going for us. Um, I think we started quite slow, so we knew that um, despite the things that were happening at the start, we still had an extra gear. Um, so, I, well, I didn't feel too worried anyway, and I don't think the other boys did, because we knew that we weren't performing at the level that we could do. And um, it was just a matter of time before we turned it around and you know got ourselves together and, and started getting playing the way uh, that we should do. Did you show character to do that? Do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, certainly. You know, to come from behind, it's always difficult. Um, so yeah, I would say so. Horrible moment for you. Was there just nothing you could do about it? Um, I reacted too late because I thought he was going wide at first, and then I seen the ball started to curl inwards, and at that point I thought I've got to get this clear but I couldn't get my leg up in time and it's bounced off my shin and gone in it's one of those things you get them when you're playing centre back trying to block the ball from going in the net Will you be pleased now it wasn't give us an own goal Oh that's good news yeah I am pleased to hear that <laughs> What did this do for you and your quest for Champions League football this result? It takes us closer um, it's another three points and you know it's no secret that our objective is and sort of it's necessary for us to win all our remaining games and that's another one ticked off but um, we've got to pick ourselves up after tonight and uh, dust ourselves down and get ready for the next game that's we can enjoy it tonight but focus is straight on to the next game you've clawed yourself back closer to the teams above you what does it throw into the fascinating mix the fact that they play each other next week as well in the premier league well yeah it just makes it more interesting doesn't it but we can't look away from our own camp too much because we can't have an effect on that um, the other teams will do what they do all we can affect is the games that we play in um, so no matter what happens elsewhere in the league we've got to concentrate on doing our job what does this give you for those remaining games though tonight something to build on um, and learn from you know we started too slow um, so we can learn from that and know that we can't do that in the future games, but obviously take confidence from it that we managed to bring ourselves back into the game, manage the game at the end like we've struggled to do in a few previous games. Um, so plenty, but like I said, um, we can't focus on tonight too much. We've got to turn our focus on to the next few games and finish the job that we've got ahead of, ahead of us. Great stuff, Nat. Well done. Thanks a lot. Cheers. At that stadium. So, Michael, choose an adjective to describe that and the meaning for it for Liverpool. Massive, massive, ga massive game, massive result. Um, they're right back in contention now. As I said before the game, I thought they needed 10 points out of the four to have a chance. 12, I'm pretty sure. If they get 12 out of 12, then I'm pretty sure they'll be playing Champions League football next season. This was the big one. This was the one that you think, going to Old Trafford, Manchester United, are, are some, some team, especially at home, don't give much away. So to win there and now have three winnable games to go, while their opponents, while the competitors have got some tough ones and actually play each other, that's a huge result tonight. Yeah, they've got a spring in their step. Did we see one team with more meaning on the fixes than the other? Yeah, probably. Uh, oh, look, Liverpool thoroughly deserved a win, I thought. I thought they were much, much the better team. Um, I thought United... We said before the game, didn't we, that the squad isn't strong enough to challenge for the league. I think we saw that tonight. Bringing Maguire... Oh, sorry, Maguire being injured was a big miss. Just that steady, calming influence. They looked all over the place at the back, really. Um, conceded a lot of chances, obviously conceded four goals. Goalkeeper, again, was less than convincing. Let's, uh, I'm sure we'll analyse the goals later and, uh, and have a look at that. And going forward, it didn't really create as much as, as, much as you would have liked. I know they scored the two goals, but still, against a, 
a centre half pairing in Liverpool, which is very inexperienced, very young. You'd expect you'd expect more from United. Yeah. No arguments about the scoreline and the way the game went for you. No, I think Liverpool were by far the better team. They they actually played like everything was at stake for them, and United were just second best. So I think Jurgen Klopp will be delighted with his players and their response. Four goals at Old Trafford. Um, they played like everything was at stake for them, and and it showed. I think for United, they just weren't there in so many phases. A very eventful Premier League week, which of course began with Manchester United uh, at Old Trafford and a defeat, and a, more importantly, a highly significant win for Leicester City. Uh, then a return to winning ways for Southampton, and then the big shock in terms of the top four race: Arsenal's league double over Chelsea. Just a second Premier League defeat for Thomas Tuchel, the Gunners winning one nil in West London. No goals. Everton couldn't get three points to go into the top five earlier drawing nil-nil at Aston Villa, but Liverpool have gone there with just their second win in 16 seasons in the Premier League, away at Manchester United by four goals to two. Well, this top eight has changed significantly in the last three days, and the last fixture to do it is highly significant. Liverpool up to fifth, 60 points, two above West Ham, four off fourth, still with a game in hand. Remember, West Brom away next, then Burnley away, and Palace at home remaining for Liverpool. And that door to the Champions League is still ajar significantly for Liverpool. He had an eventful night, didn't he? So he's mightily relieved that he hasn't been credited with an own goal. And that, of course, was the goal that uh, started us off in the first half. And it hasn't been credited to Nat Phillips, to Bruno Fernandes, and this was the slow start he was talking about, Owen. Yeah, slightly, but you have to credit United. You know, played some good stuff, good switch from Pogba, Rashford. Recognised the run from Wan-Bissaka. Great little chop back there. And Bruno sits into that little pocket as goes. He said, good first touch. I agree, I think it's bending kind of more towards the goal with the outside of his foot. And see Bruno, he's so good sitting on those little pockets of space. I think Mo highlighted the fact that at halftime there, he probably just gets a yard too far over, which makes it easy for, for Bruno to come inside. And I love the fact that Bruno just tries these things, Scalzi, you know, with his outside of his foot. Yeah, well, that's the ability he's got. That's the seal in a um, great first touch. He's seen Fabinho, has gone too far. And that imagination then to bend it. And he knows he's got the ability to do it, to bend it in that far corner. That's what he's trying to do. And that's what we think was going to happen. The response was powerful, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it had to be. Um, it had to be uh, positive. You know, not many teams come from behind against Manchester United. They normally do it to other teams. And the ball, it's a bit of a scruffy goal from there, but great reaction from, from Yotta. Um, Phillips managed to wriggle free. I do think wan Basaka has his man there. I just think if he leaves it, you know, it's got to be some finish from that Phillips going away from goal to hit it. Just leave the keeper to deal with that. But you just stick to your man. And I think by the time the ball comes in, he's left his man. And as I say, your eyes would light up. Normally you're trying to find space in the, in the middle of the goal there, trying to make a movement, but actually wan makes it easy for him. Yotta doesn't have to move a muscle and the ball just falls to his feet. And that was 1-1. One, one. And then a pretty basic goal, really, they considered just before half-time, Paul. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And Pogba will be disappointed. We said at half-time, he lets his man get in front of him. That's the last thing you can do as a defender there, especially around the back. Um, and you see him here, he knows he's done. And it's a little scramble to try and get back. He falls over, he's off balance. And it's cost United a goal, really. Although, Trent's hit a really good, good ball. And I have to say, I thought he was really good on the night. Alexander, I thought he was the best player on the pitch. And Firmino with a good header as well. So that was just before half-time. And straight after it, uh, a gift for Liverpool. From a central midfielder's point of view, talk us through this. Just don't go, with the press on, Steve, don't go and receive the ball there and never play square. My manager's always told me, never play square. Oh, look, Luke Shaw makes a bit of a mess of it coming inside, runs into a, you know, into a blind alley there. And then Trent, as Scalzi said, was just so good. Dean had a pretty awkward night, Dean Henderson. You know, that there has been unlucky there. But um, Scalzi, do you think he should be receiving that on his straight no. line? Look, I, I think teams... Since Pepper's come over, especially, I've become obsessed with this. Even passing the ball to Lindelof on the six-yard box, well, I just don't get what that's about. Unless you've got centre-halves and centre-midfield players with unbelievable ability. Now, there's only two things Fred can do there. He's facing his own goal, he can only hit it back to, to Lindelof or buy it, or he can go square. Now, if he gets any of that wrong, this is going to happen. It's going to 
create a big mistake and they're going to score a goal or get a chance. Luke Shaw then tries to you know, make amends for Fred's mistake and then another mistake by Dean Anderson. And it's been, I'd say, three to four goals. Not, not so much his fault, but I think he'd be disappointed with his contribution to them. What do you think on that? Yeah, well, I, I think there's the three um, mistakes the lads have highlighted there are, are, are obvious ones. The first one is, is the one for me, and I, I mean, there's no better people to talk about than sitting midfielders receive... Like, I used to get that ball as a centre-forward, and I hated it up there, because <laughs> half the time you get a ball and you think, right, the best I can do here, dropping it into my feet, is give it your back. That's the very, very best. Very big chance of me taking a touch, someone nicking in, or me giving it away. The best I can do. And I'm saying that even worse there, it's highlighted there. The best he can do is go back to his goalkeeper, he's tried to pass it to his left back, and that's not worked. He's slightly miskicked it, but that's the be best scenario. I can just keep the ball and we're still in the six yard box. I mean, look at what, what can he do? He can go back to Baye, maybe, but then he's going to get pressed. He goes to Luke Shaw, he gives the ball. I just don't know what the best scenario out of that whole thing is, and the, these lads have The best been scenario, in that scenario is, Michael, don't do it. Don't try and play that way. I, I, I'd say when, when our team are playing, you say we're a good footballing team. We never, we never did stuff like that. Played it, it, it on your six yard box to your centre half, and then try and play out from the edge of the box. It just never, ever happened. And now some teams can do it. Manchester City can do it. Barcelona's did it. Brilliant at it, but if you've got the players for it, yeah, these players aren't suited to that. We've seen how many mistakes Fred makes. OK, so that was pivotal at 3-1. Liverpool had a chance to just put the whole thing to bed, didn't they, uh, with yeah. Jota? He did. Yeah, he did. And I don't think he did loads wrong, to be honest. Um, again, it was, a, it was a good move, quick move, lovely first touch into his, into his path, takes the ball away from all the defenders. I actually think, if anything... Henderson does well here. He actually sprints at him and makes him make a big decision. If only he had done that for the last chance when Mo Salah scored, because I thought he made it really easy. I know we'll go on to that, that goal in a minute. But he doesn't make you panic, but he makes you make a decision quickly there, the way he ran out. And I don't think Jota did a whole lot wrong. But as I say, we go on to the last goal, and I think Henderson makes it so easy for Mo Salah. He should have taken a leaf out of his own book in, the, in, that, in that instance and, uh, and sprinted at Salah at the last minute. But well, before that last goal, when it was very comfortable, Marcus Rashford made it a little uncomfortable for Liverpool at 3-2. The nerves were jangling a touch. Yeah, I mean, this is when United were their absolute best and they were playing some really good stuff. Um, you know, that little, little dummy there from Bruno Cavani, they're all, they're all linked in, Marcus runs in behind, great run. And it's a lovely little finish. Um, but that's the thing. When these guys play like this, when they link up together, they're great to watch. Cavani had a quiet game, but there he came to life. And a uh, nice goal for Marcus Rashford. Just felt like takes a tiny little deflection here. You see off Robertson, takes a little bit of a ricochet, but a good finish. And then it felt like game on at 3-2. Uh, yeah, Mason Green would have come on as well. And it might have made it 3-3. Yeah, he might have done, yeah. I was waiting for him to come out. It seemed like it did take a, a little bit of time. I thought Marcus was really dangerous, but Mason, when he came on, he had a couple of really good chances, a couple of half chances. You see, uh, he's unlucky there. The leg clears off the line, and then the second one, can he do a lot? I'm, I'm not sure he can. Mike will probably tell you more than that. There's another three or four lads on the line, plus the goalkeeper. Can he just drag it back towards his right-hand side to the near post? I'm not sure, but... Yeah, he was unlucky. He's a real threat when he come on, and we, we, we knew he would be. Um, and he, he'll be disappointed at the score. I think his uh, teammates wanted him to pass that second opportunity. I can tell you that. But it's it's strange when you're centre forward and you have a shot. You're it almost like you go into a into a trance and need to score. And if it bounces back, you even want to score more. It's so hard to actually keep calm in those situations. And uh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He probably should have passed it though. So United pressing um, space. Salah's 200th game yeah. for Liverpool. Sold yeah, it. It, was a, it was a very good goal, very good finish. Liverpool win it early, and when you're ahead in the game, you can, you can do this, can't you? You can break quick. Let's just talk about Dean Henderson to start with, because, listen, I'm not pinning the blame on him, but that doesn't even go close to the corner, and it actually doesn't even go close to the goalkeeper either. I think he makes it easy. Just want to pinpoint here, though. When you're in this situation, I think a lot of people think, oh, you just get your head down and run. Absolutely not. You're thinking, right, what's the best? Where's the best area? I'm left-footed. Let's run away from the defender. If you were close to him, you'd cut across him. But no, I'm away from him anyway. So let's arc my run. Let's stay away from him. And let's get the ball into a... This is just the perfect area. Nine, ten yards out, coming in on your left foot. 
as it happens, he's running through on his right foot, really, as a natural, as a natural angle, he's running through on his right foot. But because he's left-footed, he arcs his run, he pinpoints where he's got to play it, he runs round the ball, so now it's on his left foot. Every single thing that he's done, from running inside his own half to when he actually hits it 50 metres later, is perfect. And that, then, makes the finish easy. If he messes that up, if, he, if, he's, if he's in a trance just thinking, let's get there quick, and then all of a sudden think, right, I'm in front of goal, what am I going to do now? You know, you lessen your chance of scoring. So he did absolutely everything. I know it looks easy from start to finish, but he's made the finish easy by doing the right thing in that 50-metre run. And as you can see, only two more players have scored more goals in their first 200 games for Liverpool than Mo Salah. Paul, discuss. I, I was just going to say, I think the goalkeeper's made it an easy finish for him by, by going backwards. Um, I'm not saying... I think he'd be disappointed with it when, when he looks back, Henderson. I'm not saying he would have saved it, but he could have made it a hell of a lot harder for him. We see him as he's not even looking at the, the goal, which you, you, you're not bothered about. But there he has to come out. He has to make the angle tight for him. All he does is go back, he goes back, he goes back. He leaves a good five to ten yard gap for him just to pass the ball in, so he makes it so easy. Yeah, just before he takes that second, that last that's little touch, goes. that's when he that's should when he actually goes, yeah. sprint at yeah. Mo Salah then. Make it difficult then. I know what, what Scholes is saying in terms of he makes it easy, but I'd argue the other side as well in saying, as a centre forward, you're in control. Wherever you go, if you go that way, then the goalkeeper has to shuffle. So you're dictating where everyone goes at the time. The one time you're not is right at the business end. In the last step or two, the goalkeeper can do something yeah. unexpected. You pretty much know what they're going to do and pretty much you're positioning them by where you go on the pitch uh, in the lead-up to that. It's almost my clear where you're just taking that last touch, then your keeper's got to go. Exactly. Because you, you almost you down a little bit, and then yeah. before you know it, the keeper's on you. And he doesn't do that, does he? Yeah. he just and he had the perfect, so easy for him. perfect opportunity, because Mo Salah, when you yeah. look at it, perfect, he actually yeah. takes his touch, and he needs another little one. Yeah. And when you see, the go when the goalkeeper That's sees... That's chance to pounce. Exactly. Yeah. He needs another one. That's a split sec. I can gain three or four yards there. That was, if he was going to do it, that was his chance, just when he made that tiny little touch near the end.